Hello and welcome to today's lesson. My name is Carl from UX Toys and today we're going to be talking about creating responsive design in Figma. Let's go! Okay, so here we are in Figma and uh, here you can see I've got uh, a, web a website design and I've got my desktop version here and I've got my mobile version over here. Um, and if I look at making these a bit, bit bigger or a bit smaller, you can see how it's just not responding in the way that I might expect. I've got navigation item up here, cramping and even overlapping. I've got card items over here, um, overlapping, which isn't great. And on my mobile version here, if I just make this bigger, nothing's moving. It's not responding in the way I might expect. If I go smaller, I've got it overlapping and this might be something you've encountered in the past when you're looking at maybe making um, a mobile design or a desktop design and you need to make slightly bigger screens or slightly smaller screens uh, for mock-ups and this is an example I've worked on before and what happens here is if I go smaller you can see my nav items are sticking to the side if I bring up my grids um, I'm not going to talk about grids in this lesson I talk about grids in the introduction to Figma tutorials uh, so if you're interested in grids uh, it's well worth having a look there but here you can see I've got 110, 20 spacing on the sides there and it's being maintained as I go bigger and smaller. Nothing's overlapping. Here you can see my text is even responding. So my text is going up and down when I start to run out of space and my card components here are also responding. So they get bigger and smaller when there's more or less uh, screen space and that spacing in between is being maintained as well. So that's really important. And again with my mobile, as you'd expect, the, the card components are stretching, the button is stretching, my navigation is uh, maintaining the left and right on the side, and everything's being maintained to the, to the grids, which is great. So I'm going to turn my grids off for a second, go up here to the uh, example that we're going to work on. So we're going to work through three uh, kind of common patterns you might have experienced in web design. So one of those is a navigation pattern where we've got a logo on the side here and maybe some nav links up here. Uh, we'll work on both desktop and mobile for all of these. The second pattern we'll work through is this kind of hero pattern where we have uh, some text and a button and maybe like an image on the right side. And again, we can see how that stacks. We're going left to right here, but on mobile we're top to bottom. And then uh, we've got this card row component as well. We're here we're made up of three cards and um, we'll show you how they can uh, stack going across on desktop and how they go down on uh, mobile. So we'll work through uh, this first pattern, as I said. Uh, we'll work through desktop first. So our first pattern is going to be this uh, navigation items and navigation like a logo here, which is going to make our nav bar. So I'm going to press command and full stop, and that brings up my sidebars. That means we're ready to work. If I do command uh, full stop again, uh, I might present work in this way where you have less going on, it's easier to show what's going on. But while we're working, we'll have our sidebars on. So there are two things we want to consider when making responsive components and responsive designs in Figma. And those two things are constraints and auto layout. And we'll walk through both of those as part of this. So the first things I'm going to do is look at these nav items up here. So if I show you what was happening before, it's overlapping and it's just not what I want. What I'd expect is to maintain that side padding on the right side and maintain the spacing in between my items as it gets smaller. Uh, and the way we're going to go about this is I'm going to hold about us, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to press download and contact. So I've got those three items uh, contained together. I'm holding all three and I'm going to press shift A. And what shift A is doing is it's creating an auto layout. You can see that's popped up on this right side here and I've created that as an auto layout. So that's the first thing we want to want to do. And here we've got the number 32 and that refers to the space between each item. If I change that to 64, the spacing gets bigger. As you can see, if I change that down to eight, the spacing gets smaller. Uh, I liked it at 32 and I'm going to bring my grids up, shift G. And that brings my grids up that I made before. And what I want to happen here is currently you can see this is maintained to the right side of this grid. I've got 120 pixels there. And when I was making this bigger, if I made this 64 again, you can see it's pushing out to the right and that's not what I want. I'd want that to stay here. I want it to stay aligned to this right side. So the way we go about doing that is in my constraints, which you can see just below my auto layout, you can see it's uh, selecting left at the minute. And I can do this either with this box or with this simulation over here, this visual. Uh, if I go on the right side and now it's pinning to the right and you can see that it said right there. And now what that means, if I change this to 64, 
we're pinned to the right. We're not pushing over. So we've got 120 pixels on the right side. So that's exactly how I expect that to work. So if I go back to 32, and another reason this is so good is if I wanted to add another navigation item here, I press Command D, that's duplicate, and I wanted to um, create a new nav item, then you know it appears and everything's responding in the way. So that's perfect. That's exactly how I'd want this to work. So now I've got my uh, nav items on the right here, and I've got my logo on the left, and when I go like that, you can see it's responding exactly how I expect. I've got 120 pixels being maintained. I'm pressing Option to show my spacing here, and I've got 120 pixels being maintained here, and my spacings aren't uh, getting smaller. They're not overlapping, so that's perfect. If I take this back to 1440, and I want to bring that over here, perfect. So um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my nav items, I'm gonna select my logo over here, I'm gonna press shift, so I'm holding both, I've got them both selected, command G. So what command G has done is it has uh, grouped those two items. Um, and the reason I've grouped these items together is because I'm gonna turn it into a component later. Um, but first we're gonna have a look at our mobile screen and we're gonna quickly just do the exact same thing here. So I've got, this um, navigation item on the right, I've got this logo on the left. All I really need to do is look at my constraints. I don't really need too much auto layout going on here. So here I've got this pinning to the left. Here I've got this pinning to the right side. So now what I'd expect is if I make this bigger, yeah, perfect. So it's maintaining my 16 pixels, it's aligning to my grid at all points, and that's absolutely perfect. So I'll just make this smaller again, make sure that is still left and that is still right. And then again, I'm gonna do uh, select both, I'm gonna press Command G and they're being grouped together. So quickly, I'm just gonna call this nav. And this one, I'm also just gonna call nav quickly. So I group them because I want to turn them into components. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm going to move off the screen for a second. And up here, uh, I've got this icon, which is gonna turn it into a component. I'm gonna click on it and you can see it's now a master component because I've got this little icon, this kind of star shaped thing here. Uh, and this is the desktop variant. So I wanna create a new variant, which will be my mobile variant. So up here, I'm gonna click on this plus and that's gonna add a variant. And here you can see, I've now got two variants of one component. The component is nav and I've got uh, a variant in here and a variant in here. So let's rename these. So my first one, this will be my desktop one. Um, so we can call this whatever we want. I could um, go in here where it says property one and I could call it type is desktop, for example. Um, and then in here I could potentially call this type. It's still called type and I would call this mobile. Do this however you want. You could call it um, mobile false, mobile true. Um, but for now I'm gonna call it type desktop and type mobile. Um, but they're the same component right now. I've got a desktop and I've got a mobile version. You can see this is the mobile version, but it looks exactly the same. So we need to get this inside here, our mobile version inside here. So going back to our mobile version, it's responding beautifully, exactly how we'd expect. I'm gonna press Command X, I'm gonna cut it. And then inside my variant, my mobile variant, I'm just gonna delete everything inside here. I don't, don't need these items. So I'm selecting that, I'm selecting that, delete. I can see, still see I've got my variant here because it's called mobile. And I'm just going to uh, paste it inside there. It's a bit skew if so let's quickly just move it to zero zero inside my component Selecting my component here, and I'm just gonna press um, this which is going to bring it so it's resizing to fit um, I'm just gonna quickly um, Ungroup this inside as well. So I don't need it to uh, have too many groups Perfect. So if I now go to my assets, I can see here. I've got a component which I've just made. This is type desktop. If I change it to type mobile, then I see my mobile version and they're both gonna respond beautifully. So if I make things smaller, if I make things bigger, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly bring this into here and I've now made a component that is uh, fluid and it's responding based on if I make it bigger and smaller. And I've also made um, a responsive version of that component. So if I come in here and I just change that to mobile and I make it fit, perfect. And it should, as I make my screen bigger, oh no, wait, so now it's not, I need to make it left and right, so it's pinned to left and right. Perfect, that's working perfectly. And here again, same, left and right, and that should be responding left and right. Cool, so that is our navigation component completely done. We've got a responsive component which is going to expand based on the screen size. It's also gonna adapt based on the number of links that I've got in here. If I make more, you can see that they're gonna grow out there. 
um, and we have both a desktop and a mobile version of this one variant. Okay, so let's have a look at our next pattern, which is going to be this hero pattern here in the middle. And this hero pattern here is made up of some text on the, life, uh, on the left side, which is two bits of text and uh, a button here, and then an image on the right side. And when we're making this smaller, it's not maintaining to our grids, it's kind of overlapping, it's not what we want to happen. And over here on our version that we worked on before, uh, you can see it's maintaining on that left grid there, which is perfect. It's maintaining that we've got these grids. This image uh, is going to stay the same size and this uh, bit of text here is going to fill whatever space is available. So how do we go about doing that? So I'm going to come back up here. Let me just take this back to 1440. And this version we're going to work on up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, this bit of text here is already in auto layout. I've I made this before. And this is the same concept as what's going on in these uh, text links here. So over here, I make this bigger, this the spacing. You can see the spacing changes. The only thing that's different here is it's going down and not across. So if I change this to across, you can see it's going left to right, one, two, three. If I change it down, it goes top to bottom, one, two, three. So that's perfect. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift, I'm going to select this item, I'm going to select the image. And again, I'm going to press shift A, and that's going to turn this into an auto layout again. So inside this auto layout, as I said, I want this phone to maintain uh, its size, no matter how big the screen or uh, how small the screen is. And the way I go about that is I over here, I've got it set as fixed. I want to keep that as fixed, so I always want it to keep it at that size. Then on this piece here, this uh, bit of intro text on the left side, what I want this to do is to fill whatever room is available in this container. So I'm going to change that to fill container. So whatever room is available left over from this 468 width of this phone is how much room that's going to take. But if I look at this right now and I change the container, you can see it's getting bigger and it's filling whatever space is available. So the text is responding. But when we look at our desktop, it's not going to be moving right now, so it's still maintaining its uh, width here. And the reason for that is because we haven't changed the constraints. It's only sticking to the left right now. So the way we want to go about it is change that to left and right. And that means it's going to look at the left side and it's going to look at the right side. Here you can see we've currently got a one column offset on both sides. If I make this bigger, it's going to maintain that one column offset. Um, and if I go smaller, it's going to maintain that one column offset on both sides. So that's perfect. This is exactly how we want this to respond. So this is the, the desktop version of this is now done uh, and we're happy with that. If we look at our mobile version, um, it's going to be much the same. I'm actually just going to take this for now and I'm going to bring it over. And because really what you can see happening here is we've got this left to right currently. I'm just going to put a background on this so you can see what's happening. Um, we've got this left to right and really what we want is it to be up and down. And you can kind of see how that's the same thing. So what width we got this at, 343. So that th reason it's 343 is because it's a 375 width and it's got a 16 pixel on both sides. I'm pressing option to show you my spacing there. And if I just change this to three, what did I say it was? 343, cool. So I'm gonna select this again if I'm able to. Currently have it three pixel width, which is silly of me. 343. Awesome. So now that is effectively the same kind of size here. Um, all I'm really going to want to do here is I've um, got some slightly different font sizes here. So I've changed this down. These are my um, styles that I've worked with before. If you're interested in learning about reusable styles, again, that's in the Intro to Figma course that you can find on UX Toast. Uh, and I can make that smaller. I could make this one smaller, for example, do that. This button here. Um, you can see it's not filling the container right now. This is going to fill the container if I make this smaller it, it goes smaller if I go bigger it goes bigger perfect So the way I go about that again, I click on my button and where it says hug I change it to fill container It's going to be as big as the container needs to be and This phone here um, What I can do here is I can again I could change it to fill container, but it loses its um, Constraints there. So if I manually if I press shift and that means it's going to contain it's going to keep the proportions and I can go smaller there so now with this phone, all we're going to want to do is make sure it stays in the middle. So I'm going bigger and smaller here. The text is working fine. The button is working fine. It's just this bit of phone is um, is sticking to the left currently. So the way we want to go about solving that is I've just got this uh, auto layout frame selected. And I just select in the middle here. This is where everything's going to align to. So if I make this bigger, the phone stays in the middle. And if I make it smaller, the phone is still going to stay in the middle. 
So that's perfect. That's a, um, a responsive component, which uh, we have here on desktop. And again, if you wanted to turn this into a, an actual reusable component, like we did on our nav here, you could do the exact same process. You turn it into a component and then you create a mobile variant and a desktop variant. We've created our desktop variant and we've created our mobile variant here. Just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through that again though. Um, and finally, we're gonna talk about our card row component. So what's going on in our card row component? Get rid of my grids again, press Shift G and I'm gonna make this smaller and you can see things are starting to overlap and that's really not what we wanna see. Uh, and when we come down to this version that we worked on before, you can see that if I bring my grids up again, it maintains the grids, it sticks to the left and right side of our grids and the spacing between our cards stays exactly the same and all that's happening is the cards itself are getting bigger or smaller. So how are we going, to, how are we, uh, going about building that? So if I come up here again, and as you'd expect, I'm gonna select all three items, I'm gonna press Shift A, and I've put that into an auto layout. So that means the uh, spacing between, currently you have it at 21, realistically that should probably be 24. Um, and if I just make it smaller, that will actually align, uh, we'll make it align to our grids as we're going, so we have 24 uh, pixel spacing between each one. So the way that we wanna go about um, making sure that these are filling all available space, here you can see it's filling up too much space, in my auto layout option here, if I click on these three dots, we currently have it as packed. If we change it to space between, and here you can see that that is now made it so it's gonna fill in all available space. If I now create a new one, and I press Command D, you can see a new object has been added in, and it's maintaining the spacing between, but it's overlapping. So again, that's not what we want. So if I come back, and I have a look at these, so I've got these three objects, I've got 16 pixels between each one, uh, and I've got it so there's space between. You can see that here because I've got our alignment. If I quickly shifted it over here, you can see we lost that space again. So again, going back here and change it to space between. Now what I wanna do is choose each individual card component and it has a fixed width currently, but we want this to fill the container that um, it is in. So now, as before when I created a third uh, I create a fourth item and it all overlap. If I create a fourth now, it all uh, maintains the spacing. It's maintained that 16 pixel spacing that we wanted between each one. Um, and it's just making more space. I could just keep doing this. Uh, it would look a bit ridiculous, but I can just keep adding more and more in there. For the sake of this, I'm just gonna keep it at three for now. But one thing you could see happen there is we've kind of lost that bottom spacing and we're not getting, the, the card component is not big enough anymore. You can see, our text component here inside is uh, is too big for the card and the card is not responding in a vertical manner as well. So the way we're gonna go about fixing this is if I again select each one of these card components, you can see up here it's currently set to fix. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna change this to hug contents. So that means the, um, the card is gonna look inside itself, it's gonna look inside the group and it's gonna make sure that it's big enough to fill in. And here we've got it, so it's got 16 pixels at the bottom. It's gonna make sure that those 16 pixels are always maintained. So now if I make this a little bit smaller, you can see that the card gets a little bit smaller because it's looking inwards. But what if in this example just now, we wanted, if I just get rid of this again, and you can see it's uh, got smaller. What if we wanted all the cards to maintain the same height? So in this example, these cards are bigger than this card. And if we wanted it to look really nice and we want it to be like this without having to manually do that, so I've just changed that to fixed. So here's the way that we'll go about doing that. If I just delete that so we can come back to where we were. Um, so what I'm gonna do before we set these all to fill container, um, to hug, can, uh, hug contents, instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to fill container. And that's just gonna look at the container but the container, we need it to look inwards, and that's what we're doing. So now the container of those objects is gonna look inside and see uh, how big are the items inside, and the cards are gonna look outwards and they're gonna fill in all available space of that container. So this is perfect. So now if I have uh, uh, an item here and we have loads of text, you can see all of them are gonna get bigger. And that's, that's exactly what, how we'd want, it, uh, want that to respond. So now it, everything, everything stays nice and neat and it's gonna maintain the same sizing. And now if I just come back, let's have a look at this then. Let's uh, check if the spacing and the, um, the responsiveness is gonna work. I'm just gonna change this to left and right again, as we did previously. 
if I go to desktop, and I'm hoping this is gonna work perfect. So here you can see it's maintaining my left grids, which is perfect. It's maintaining the space between my grids. The whole design is respecting the grids, which is perfect. And I can get rid of one and it's still going to. So you can see it's filling all available space. I've got three, uh, three cards that are taking up four, uh, 12 columns, so they're taking up four columns each. So the same kind of rules are gonna to apply to our mobile design, as you might expect. I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna bring it over here. And again, as with the auto layout, we now want it just to go down. But I mean, that's just got ridiculously big. So instead, I'm going to change that to a fixed width. Here we have it set at four, three, four, three, four, three currently. So I'm just going to do that for now. Three, four, three. Perfect. Each one of these currently is um, looking like they've got a fixed uh, width. So we instead want that to fill the container. And this, uh, because we've got content overlapping slightly, we want to change this to hug contents. And there we go. Now they're all going to maintain the right sizing. And if I just take this, I'm actually just going to delete these and paste it in there instead. Cool. Um, but now if we just look at our mobile screen, I'm just going to delete this for now. Mobile screen and we change it bigger. It's not growing and the same kind of rules are going to apply. The thing that we're missing is this left and right. We change it to our left and right spacing there. It should maintain that space and it's just going to fill in what, a, a, whatever available space there is. Amazing, so now we've got our desktop screen and we've got our mobile screen uh, and everything should be responding in the way we, that we'd expect. So if we make this smaller now, we can see all of our grids are being maintained, all of our text is responding, our cards are getting smaller. If we wanna add another card in, then they're still maintaining our grids, it's still maintaining our spacing. And the same with our mobile screen, uh, our buttons getting bigger, our texts are getting bigger, our cards are growing as well. Uh, so that's perfect. This is exactly what we want. And we've also had a look at creating uh, responsive components. So if you wanted to turn this into a desktop variant, you've got the same component, which is uh, made up of two components, two variants, which is a, a desktop and a mobile. Uh, before we finish the lesson, I'll just show off one more thing, which uh, is available for free as part of UX Toast, which is um, a starter kit for web design called Sourdough. Uh, and Sourdough is um, a completely free framework for creating responsive design. Uh, and you can go to the UX Toast website and you can find this, or you can go to the Figma marketplace and you can find this, and it's completely free to download. Um, and it talks a little bit more about um, how we can create all of these responsive designs. There's a few other patterns in here. Um, and each of these has a mobile and a desktop variant. So if I just take this, hero uh, component over here. This is a hero component and we have a mobile version of that. If we wanted to um, have instead a central version, you can see that we have a central version of our hero and we have a mobile screen. So feel free to uh, go to UX Toast or to the Figma marketplace, search for the sourdough starter kit and you'll be able to download this for free and you can play around with it and uh, delete it, you know, change anything, duplicate it, see how things are built um, and because it shows some auto layout things in here which um, you can learn a little bit more about responsive design from. Amazing, so that's everything for today's lesson. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing because it really helps the channel and I'll see you in the next lesson.